Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sasai with a video here today. Bring us a Photoshop to record your very own cool Cyberpunk stream revamp. So as you guys know, new games are coming out. This was coming out in like, I guess like a month and a half-ish. I don't know exactly, but it's close enough that you guys just get some, you know, prepare yourselves for it. Come out with a really cool stream, uh, stream revamp for yourselves. Hopefully I put myself, like my camera inside of it. You can see how cool it actually looks. It's pretty freaking dope. So hope you guys do enjoy it. We'll start off with like, the branding guidelines, which I also have PSD for you guys in the description below. If you guys wanna download that as well. But like not really branding guidelines, but just like it close enough, right? And then we'll move into Photoshop designing it. And then you guys just enjoy yourself. Just kind of have a little bit of fun with like all the design assets, all that good stuff. Also, minder, just don't worry about the setting. This is like a, like maybe like a two time thing in like a video, even if I just don't, don't worry about it. All right. We're still in LA. You're going to probably see me here, right? But then also in the same video, I'm going to be in LA. So don't worry about it. But regardless, I love you guys. Hope you enjoy the video and uh, peace. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start off what actually makes Cyberpunk what it is. Almost like a branding guidelines, nothing official, but can definitely help. First things first, the color scheme. Cyberpunk loves the glitch effect, and not much works better than having the color ratios of some reds, some blues, and some greens. They're super fun colors to work with, as their yellow actually is their main primary base. Now, following that is a text effect that they like to use. And for how cool it looks with the correct font, it's super simple to do as well. Basically, utilizing an inner shadow option with the secondary color, in this case blue, and keeping everything set to zero besides the distance, which gives it an RGB split look. It also solves ease of use when you want to adding another additional color because all you have to do is duplicate the inner shadow and change the angle and the color once again. Then lastly, the design elements they enjoy using, which includes this really cool thin line panel idea which gives off a really cool mech look. You can actually simply create this by changing your brush settings to 1 or 2 size, 100% hardness, and using a pen tool to find your lines. Then right click with the pen tool and use the stroke path and it'll actually take the settings that the brush actually has. Super simple but incredibly effective. Now they also use a series of 2D buildings you can make really easy with pen tooling. Following that, fade it inside the background on some of your projects and allow the city vibes to carry through really easily. Then lastly, the simple glitch line effect using the same layer size or text effects with the inner shadow idea ends up adding texture where texture is needed and filling space which is also super effective in the world of tech. Overall some easily picked up branding elements and makes for a super awesome design structure. Which I'm well aware that a lot of thought process probably went into the game more than I gave you guys in the intro, but it's a really good base for when designing for the game. Alright homies, now that you guys are all set and good to go with the branding guidelines and the ideas behind how I ended up creating something like this, I'm now going to create it and show you guys how simple it really is, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy and kind of get the idea and be able to take this screen that we do here and manipulate it into different screens as well, like starting soon screen, ending screen, even using panels and all that cool stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right into this right now. Alright, so we're going to get this started. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to get rid of this for a second and use yellow once again as my base. It's kind of hard to look at this tone at like without anything else on it, but we're going to get through it. So I'm going to make a new layer and on this new layer, I'm going to press control and backspace. That'll quick fill in my background color for me. Press control T to free transform it. And I'm going to shrink this down. And since my ratio of my document size is 1920 by 1080, which is a 1080p obviously screen, right? That is the basic ratio that you guys mostly use for webcams, right? So they can use this in a nice little base for yourself. So with this, I'm going to make a new layer. And with this base here, I'm going to take the angles of it or use the outside edges of it as like a nice simple template for me. But on the same time, I'm also going to take this and make these really cool sort of like not more like a triangular or like a trapezoid-esque shape, right? And not do too much up and down. You want to do more like really cool angles, right? So I'm going to take this, do these really cool angles here. Do one here, right? If you guys do not know, if you hold shift and hold at an angle, you'll make a perfect 45 degree angle. That is how I'm making simple and really crisp, uh, clear, consistent um, angles here, right? I'm going to take this, do something over here. Let's go down a little bit more. Then we'll go really far up, go all the way through. Then we'll just say, hey, we're going in a little bit come back out then we'll just do something like that and I think that works so with this now I can press right click fill a uh, path right take the color and with the color is 060A0D so press OK press OK again right click delete path and now I have myself a simple little camera here that you can make it as many times as you guys wish you can like until you're perfectly fine with it but for me this works but at the same time it's just like it's it can be literally anything it's abstract it's fun it's like the really cool techie feel so now that I have this out of the way I want to actually take the actual this camera picture here so you guys don't have to look at a black screen there you guys go nice little picture of Jack just like really upset I guess um okay so I'm gonna make a new layer above that one right here I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the left uh, hand side here. I'm like a nice little margin. So, what this is right over here is a nice little margin here. So, I kind of split it between the actual camera being here, 
nice little margin being here. We have a little secondary sort of like asset here. And then in this corner here, we have this simple little sort of blockage. And that's how I ended up blocking off my cyberpunk idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it and take the same exact thing and do the same exact thing over here, right? So I do this. Let's go far down. Let's go like over here. Let's go back in. Then we'll go back in a little bit more. Let's go pretty far down. Go back in, right? Now again, I'm holding shift, right? To make these little simple 45 degree angles. And I want to say that's pretty good. Now we're going to go outside the canvas, right click, fill the path in, drop down, use color, use that same nice, uh, you know, blackish tonish color here. It's basically black, but it also has a little bit, a hint of a blue inside. I'm going to just say, boom, move this out a little bit more. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think that would work for me. So I, I, and realistically, you can see the difference here is I have a lot more longer kind of path in here. So I actually might try that again and uh, do a little bit more of like a longer pathing. Okay, I think that works. I think it's a little bit better. I think it's just more of a longer stroke and longer gestures are a lot more better for this end, in this case here. So I'm gonna say it's pretty good. I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit more so it's a little more thicker on that side. Uh, side. But what I'm gonna do now is I make a duplicate of this with Control J. And I'm gonna take this same sort of yellow color here with a color overlay, just like so. Choose that yellow, right? Now I'm gonna have one that's more of that blackish tone and one that's more of that yellow. I'm gonna take the yellow one and offset it just a little bit, dragging it far towards the bottom left a little bit. Right, then I'm gonna take the black one below it. I'm gonna press Control T, stretch it out this way, stretch it out this way as well to make it look a little bit different than what it was originally, but also kind of giving a nice little sign up kind of idea of it kind of being different as well. But all I did was stretch it, right? So now what I can do is I can take my logo in here. Where's my logo at? Let's kind of take this really quick. Take my logo and place it in here as well. Kind of have it be a nice little spot to sit. Now, this can be your chat area. You can also make this a little longer. Put your chat in here. You might want to shoot your camera down a little bit more. But for now, this is going to work for us. So what I want to end up also doing is above this yellow bar here, I want to make another sort of area to break this so much yellow on this side. So I'm going to say, yo, click here, click over here again. Boom, hold shift as well to make those simple crisp angles right quick fill that in there just like so and now we have ourselves a nice simple little blockage here and it helps out the fact that there's so much heavy kind of color going on, on that left hand side this will break it apart a little bit more and it looks a bit more better a little bit better in my opinion so if you even once you can take this bar here kind of cut it up a little bit it might look really dumb or might look pretty good so i mean it works so i'm gonna actually end up keeping that so what i want to do now is i'm gonna drag in my little assets here so i have this one right here which is the um 2d kind of buildings here kind of bring that city vibe right so i'm gonna take this and i want to make sure where this layer is is this one right here let's rasterize it that way i can take my building and clip and mask it to it so nothing it doesn't bleed out right then it looks pretty freaking good now keep a reminder the way i end up doing these little simple uh how do you say these buildings is all i end up doing is using a pen tool right pen tooling out the building quick fill in that with like a nice little black then I would pen tool again and erase out a window. And I just kind of repeated that, made bigger and taller ones. Really what you would do in kindergarten, make little, uh, you know, skyscrapers. The same as I think you would just apply here, just make a little bit lower opacity is what I end up doing. So what I want to do though for you guys, is that mech sort of like panel thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new layer, take my brush and change it to two size and 100 hardness, right? I'm going to take my pen tool here and we're going to say, click, click, right? Let's go over here and go pretty straight line, click and click this way. All right, let's get like a really cool gesture one here. And let's do another one here. And I think let's do this one be like a little more like a, like aggressive that way. And then we'll kind of just go on through in there, right? So with these random lines here, and also probably want to just say not too close to the logo like that. Boom, right? I'm going to right click stroke path. Now, when you do right click stroke path, it'll take the brush settings, but it also changes. It also takes the color of your foreground color. So if you do have a yellow as your primary foreground color, you want to switch that to be a darker color. In this case, that bluish blackish tone that we have as the secondary right here, I switched to my foreground color. Now, if I right click stroke path on a new layer, press brush, right? Drop down tool brush. Boom. I have myself these nice little lines here. It might be a little bit too many. I'm just going to say, we'll just erase that one and call it a day. I think, you know, right. Or this one too. Right, I think that works. But what I'll do is I'll make sure I clip and mask this right here to this layer right there. That way it's only inside this yellow block layer and not anywhere else it doesn't bleed out. So that works perfectly fine. So now we're gonna really quickly work on the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna go ahead and use stream. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and take this out, please. Okay, change the color, but take it out. Boom. Let's also take this above that. Right, I wanna put the word stream. I wanna put the word intermission. Now with this, I wanna go ahead and use the font Akira. I'm gonna take the VA spacing, put it at zero. Shrink this down a lot more. <clears throat> and I also wanna apply the same exact color correction, or it's not color correction, but the same exact text effect that's on this logo. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. However, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna click on it, double click on this, use inner shadow, right? Take this uh, distance, just move it to by one. Choke can be at zero as well. Then I'll take this stream one over here, double click this. I'll use inner shadow again, but not pink, or excuse me, not blue, but I'll use pink this time, right? The nice little other secondary tone there. That looks pretty good. We'll make a new layer. Give this a nice little rectangle here because we can fill that in. Oops, don't know why that happened. Right, fill that in. That looks pretty good. What I'll also do here, I'm gonna take this, shrink these, and we'll make that simple little texture that I have going on in some of the other areas, like this right here. Little texture right here. If you guys want it, you can group all those little things you just did together with Control G, double click on this, and I can also use another inner shadow give it another simple little glitch effect. But this time I can add two. So I'll do one as pink, make another duplicate of one, make this one blue, right? And with this blue one, I'm gonna change the angle, right? It makes it look pretty glitchy and cool. So that works for me. I can just can take some from over here and apply them to the actual design over here as well. But realistically, that's exactly how I end up creating these little boxes here. So I would say it does make or break it. I really do think you should add to them if you guys choose to. Um, because it will make it look a lot cooler in my opinion and I can just take them if you want to and just make some a little bit longer make some a little bit bigger Realistically, you won't see too much of a difference. You can just add multiples of one right just by simply holding alt and shift and just dragging and duplicating them Right the more you add it probably the better it is to be fair The more this is basically just simple very minuscule texturing that you're doing and it looks really freaking good no matter what So I think you should definitely apply it so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna add in, let's just take all this and group this together so it's not too messy, right? We'll go below the webcam here, right? Make a new layer. I'm gonna take this pen tool here, nice little lower throat here. Fill this in with that same sort of blackish tone. Boom, right? Then I'll go ahead and use the word courage. Um, Cause that's who this is at least. Ah, oh, we'll do Seso HQ this time actually. I did courage last time. Seso HQ, then I'll just change this color to yellow. Then I'm gonna change this font also to the Cyberpunk font, which is literally called Cyberpunk. If I didn't say it already, but it's in the description down below uh, for you guys to use. But let's go ahead and just do that. Perfect. Make this pretty big in my opinion. It's kind of important who the streamer's name is, right? We'll put Seso HQ. My nose is super itchy today. Um, Seso HQ and then we'll put camera just to be descriptive in some kind of way. Dude, I got like, I just like dust around. So I got so much stuff in my freaking nose. Um, okay, so we'll use Akira. Then we'll go zero. Then we'll just actually not Akira. We're gonna use Grifter, I think. Grifter is a little bit more of like a like a skinnier version of Akira in a, in a sense, not really. But we'll take the VA spacing and space that up a lot more. We'll go like four, pretty small. We'll take the VA spacing even like really crank it up and just go one more down, I think, for the size. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Now for the text effect for this, we're gonna do the same exact thing. Inner shadow. Take the blue. Boom. I can give it a little bit more. I like that. Okay, that works for me. And I'll also just type, uh, put the little sort of circuit board-esque ID in the background. So what I'll do is I'll type in stream. <clears throat> for this one, I have a layer style for it already. This is just basically using this style right here. The same exact premise. So what I end up doing is I just use the simple inner shadow trick once again, but this time I just made sure my fill was on zero so it had no color on the inside. So realistically, if you just made it yellow, it also work. But if you'll take your fill, lower it all the way down to zero, it'll keep the actual layer styles, but it'll get rid of anything that's on the actual layer itself. So I can take the word stream, right? Put it in the background here. Then I'll duplicate it and change the word from stream to intermission. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna take basically like three letters you'll see, right? And I'll kind of give it more texture in the background here. Okay. And I think realistically, we're almost done. I want to put a few more little blocks behind this little overlay here, and I think we'll call it there.
Perfect, now that I have those little things there, I think I'm pretty set to go ahead and save. So the way I wanna quickly save it and show you guys is because it's kind of important. So you can see that this text does go over the uh, the actual overlay camera itself. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take this, give it this for a second. I'm gonna take this box that we made for our camera, make it a nice little color, drag it above everything, but also I wanna put the uh, the word text of the Sesso also above it as well. So I'm gonna take the, anything that you wanna put above it, you can put other like rectangles above it as well. You can put text as well above it like I'm about to do right now, but whatever you wanna have, make sure it's above, right? I'm gonna take them and hide them for a second. Then everything else, I'm gonna click on the first top layer of everything else, hold shift, even click on the bottom layer as well. Control G to group them, by the way. Then Control J to make a duplicate then control E to merge it all together. Now, the reason why we did that is we merged it all together. So every one of the layers we just did are in this simple little kind of layer right here. What I'll do is I'll hold control now, select the thumbnail of this box that we made originally, right? This box right here, we'll select the thumbnail of it. When we hold control and select the thumbnail, it'll make a marquee selection of the actual selection of the shape itself, right? Then I can go back to this group um, layer here, press delete on my keyboard. Boom, right? Now you can see all of it is now kind of transparent. All the kind of things you did before that you had like hovering over it works perfectly. But now all the other stuff you want to put back in front, you just basically unhide and boom, now we have the word Sesso HQ nice and like simple, like simply above it. So if the camera was below it, you'll still see the word Sesso HQ above the camera, which gives a nice little cool dynamic, makes you feel more in like, I guess in the graphic itself, but that's pretty freaking dope. So now you can go ahead and just use file export save for web legacy mode and we'll go ahead and just use uh, png 28 make sure the transparency table is checked that way you can see it's transparent as a background you press save you save it you put it in your obs your obs image goes first right below is your camera and you can just kind of fix your camera of course this is not the most how do you say like evenly sized things you can even zoom it in you can stretch it you can make the actual uh, intermission more stretched itself right and then you can just have your camera be more zoomed in it's a you have endless possibilities but for the most part this is how you end up creating your own sort of stream intermission itself and you can take the same exact style the same exact idea and just apply it to other areas and it's just it's honestly it's just simply using shapes a little bit of texture of the circuit board intermission sort of uh how do you say uh inner shadow idea and these little sort of like texturing bits here these little lines that kind of help you kind of create this really cool sort of like mech sort of like panels um, yeah, it's as simple as that. And I think today video is done. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. You learned something and you can take this style and go run with it in different directions. Just kind of have fun. And, uh, the game's not coming out for, uh, when this video is uploaded, the game comes out like a month from then. So regardless, I hope you guys do enjoy today's video. You guys need yourself a little bit of a head start. And, um, uh, yeah, that's about it. So that's for HQ out. You gotta keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking better guys later. Much love. Peace once again, dude. Okay, we're done. D like, I'm telling you, the construction outside is like, it's blowing. So I have my AC on, it's just blowing dust. And I have to like dust everything. It's so annoying, bro. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, peace. 